So the way that we're going to start this is first we're going to take a look at the mock-up again and think about it in the way that we were kind of talking about in some of the other lessons. And what that really means is just breaking it down into pieces. And in this particular mock-up, there's not a whole lot going on. And so the, the two major components here are, are really just the nav bar and then the main content area. And you can kind of see how, you know, there, there are, there's content within boxes. Um, you, you, I think if you, if you think about it, you can really start to see what needs to be wrapped in what kind of HTML tags. And uh, that's basically just our job here today is, is we're, you know, we're going to start out by building the structure of the page by using these HTML tags, building the containers that we need. And then we're going to start styling it as well so that it ultimately looks a lot more like what our mockup is trying to show. And so just to get things started, it, it makes sense to just set up the very basic document structure. That's something that you're going to see anytime you do an HTML document. So the very first thing we'll do is a doc type declaration and we'll call this HTML. We'll set up our HTML tag and look at that. If I just hit tab in sublime text, it just does it all for me. Gives me everything that I need auto completes. That's pretty handy. So our title tag is basically what's going to show up in the browser um, in the title. Usually in the browser, it shows up on the tab here on the very heading of the tab and then some other places across the Internet. So if you're building a live site, you're definitely going to want to fill in your title tag. For us here today, it's it's really just more of a, an interesting convenience. So Viking Blogger homepage. And uh, th that's all we'll start with right now <clears throat> up in the head. But then we'll start adding the structure. And so, like I said, the, the two major sections are going to be our nav bar and our main content area. So we'll just create some divs for both of those. So I can just type div tab and it'll it'll just give me some divs. That's, again, a nice little feature of Sublime Text. And we'll set the class to one of them to be nav bar. And we'll set the class of another one. Oops. Actually, I, th I think just uh, as a note, I've, I've set it up so that the tab is is what's going to autofill those those divs. I think for you it might be enter if you haven't set that setting. But anyways, uh, so what I'm going to do with the second one is I'm going to set up the class equals, uh, let's do main content. And now we, we have our two large containers. And so we can just say, just to show you on the page, we could say navbar here, and then we have content here. And so if we refresh our index.html, not only you see the navbar in the content, but then up here in the top on the tab, you can see that it now says Viking Blogger homepage. So that's pretty nice. All right, so now where do we go from here? Well, let's let's break down the navbar itself. We can see that there are different sections of the navbar, and you can kind of get this, you have to kind of develop an eye for it, but basically you can kind of see that there are sections of the navbar that, that have to be kind of styled together. You know, there are sort of visual groupings of things. And so the first one is really just this logo section. So that contains the logo and then and then the um, the, the name the, the logo text, and so what we can do there is we can set up our own little div. We'll call that div class logo container because it actually is going to contain the logo. And inside of that, we're going to need an image for the logo, and we'll just set that up as we don't know what that image is going to be, and we'll just call it Viking Blogger for now. And then on the other side, on the right, we've got these additional navigation elements. And since those are nav elements, we'll just call that div class equals nav elements container. And you'll develop a style over time for how you name things. I'm not terribly picky right now. I'll usually go in and refactor things later and, and clean up my titles once it becomes a little bit more clear what they're actually supposed to do. I mean, when you first start out, I wouldn't spend too much time on it. And so within that, within this, this little nav section on the right, We've also got individual buttons. And so for now, why don't we just call one of those div class button and we'll style that appropriately. We'll say that's create post. And then the other one is going to be a drop down menu. And we're not actually going to build that here just because we don't have access to the JavaScript that we need to, to make the menu drop down. So we'll, we'll just kind of make that a, a static thing. And so basically that's all we really need to worry about right now in the nav bar. So if we if we refresh our nav bar, well, it doesn't look like much, but you can see that things are things are starting to, to come together just a little bit. And so then um, I think the the next thing that we can do is we can we can just kind of fill in the, the generic content of of the uh, the main section. 
And so what I would do is I'd probably, I'd break it out. Um, there's going to be this search section here and then there are gonna be individual posts down here. And some posts are gonna be photos and some posts are just gonna be text posts. So we'll have to treat those just a little bit differently. But for now, let's, let's just stick with the high level stuff. And so we'll start with uh, div class is uh, search container. And in general, I, li I like to, to, to keep labeling my divs as containers, just when I know that they're, they're not actually an element themselves that's meant to be functional. They're more of a, a, a convenience grouping of other elements that help me kind of place them on the page. And so for this one, I'm gonna wanna put in a, a search field. I'm not gonna worry too much about that right now because we're also gonna have to build a form around it. So we'll just call this search for now. Because again, the, this first pass is really just about kind of getting things on the page just so that you, you have it all in front of you. And so then the other one, I'll say, I think all of these posts are gonna get wrapped. You know, they, there might be 20 posts listed one after another after another going down here. And all of those are gonna be inside of some sort of container as well. So we'll just call that a post container for now. And then for the sake of literally building this mock-up as is, we're, you know, we're also gonna have to build those individual posts. And so we can call those div class equals post. Oops. And we can actually build two of those. Even though one is one is going to be the uh, the photo post and the other is gonna be a text post. We'll, we'll worry about that a little bit later once we get down there. So we'll call this text post. Photo post. And so I don't, I don't wanna think about this too much because I'd rather actually focus on the nav bar while we can. And so now if I refresh down here, you can see that I've got, I've got the text that I need and there's obviously no styling associated with it. So the next thing that we're gonna do um, is related to styling and you'll see why in just a sec. So let, let's say that what I really want up in the nav bar up here is to make sure that my Viking blogger is actually an H2 level, uh, a second level heading. And so if I type in H2, I make that an H2 and I take a look at it. Well, H2s already have a whole bunch of styling. You can see that it's it's pushed the elements above and below it away from it. And it's also got bold, it's, it's got the right size or it's got a, a larger size text. Uh, but that's not always a very convenient thing. And, and we spoke, a we talked a little bit in some of the previous lessons about CSS resets. And so this is a good time to, to pull in a CSS reset so that these default styles that your browser is already using don't, don't get in the way of uh, what you're doing. And so what we can do is we can actually just go grab one. So usually what I end up doing when I'm not feeling too picky is I'll just go straight up to this one, the very first one on Google. Let's take a big, take a big copy out of that. Copy it, start a new file here, paste it in, save that file as reset.css and you're ready to go. So just, just a quick look at the reset, you can see that it just it just adds up all these tabs, all, all these tags, and it just resets their margin, their padding, their borders, their font sizing, everything. And that way you have sort of a blank slate to work with so that you're not, you're not accidentally styling things, which could be different from one browser to the next. And so the way that we would link to that is we would actually need to do a link tag. So rel equals, let me just double check that, I think, I always forget that one. So yeah, it's, it's the rel is style sheet and the type is text CSS. And then the href is just gonna be reset.css because it's in the same folder. So we don't need to do any kind of fancy linking. And so now if we go over to the Viking Blogger homepage and refresh, there it goes, we're back to nothing, which is great. At first, it might seem kind of strange. Why are you gonna do that? Why do you actually want your H2s to go back to zero? But it's more so that you can be sure that you have the control that you think you do. And so we'll see, we'll see that in just a sec here. Okay, so for this next bit, there's a few different ways that you can set it up when you're, when you're working with other CSS files. And as we saw with this, the reset.css, of course you can import it using a link tag or what a lot of people do when they first start out is they'll actually just write their CSS inside of style tags up here. And then they'll put their CSS in here. Um, what's cool about working in a, a GUI based text editor like Sublime is that you have handy tools like for instance, under view, you can go under layout and then double column. So now we have two columns. And so what we can do over here is we can actually create a new file and we can save it as, save it as just styles.css for now. 
it's not really that helpful. But and now, so what we can do over here is just we can start working with them side by side, and that's really handy because then you can kind of see the page coming together with the structure over on the left, and then the style over on the right, and it makes for a really good work environment. And so the first thing that we'll do here is we'll just copy and paste our reset, and we'll just rename it style.css. And just to show that it's working, we'll set up the, uh, the body with background red. Yep. All right, so it's working. Don't need to worry about that, though. There's no reason to a reason to make that whole thing red, of course. And so I think the the first thing that we should probably do is just see what we can do with the, with the uh, the logo and the image here, and just see if we can get those to look something resembling what we have over here in, in the, the mock-up. And so what that means is making finding an image, making the image the proper size, and then changing around the size and alignment settings for the uh, the Viking blogger title such that they're in line like they are here in the mock-up. And so one of the first things that we can do is I've actually found a, uh, a random logo from the web. And so we can just replace that here just for the sake of having something to work with. And of course, like most images, it's not quite sized properly. If you're working on a professional project, you're probably going to do everything in your power to, to really optimize your images so that they, they have the exact right pixel counts. But for what we're doing here, I wouldn't worry too much about that. But what we do need to do is size that thing appropriately. And so one of the first things that we'll do then is inside of the logo container div, we're going to target the image element and we're going to set its size properties. So we're going to set its width to 30 pixels and we're going to set its height also for 30 pixels. And so what that's going to do is it's going to make that thing look a whole lot smaller, which is perfect. It's exactly what we want. Um, and you might be wondering, why are we, why, why don't we just, why do we even bother with the logo container. And that's because if we have other images on the page, then you know we're gonna wanna make sure that we target the proper one. And so another thing that we could have done is we could have actually added a class directly to the image itself. That's quite common, especially with beginners working on, on very simple web pages. But as you start to get into larger projects, you're actually gonna end up thinking a little bit more about, about namespacing things properly within other classes. And so so this becomes a more more common pattern where you sort of you start to target based on a very broad characteristic like a, like a container div and then you start narrowing it down by adding on additional things and that's not really something that's that easy to do with just naked css like we're working with now but there are also a lot of css frameworks that you'll end up working with and, and what are called preprocessors which make your life a whole lot easier and, and we'll get into those at a later at a later point and so that's that's i think one of the reasons why that this pattern has uh, gotten a little bit more popular and why it's also um, something that I'm personally quite a fan of. So anyways, um, we've, we've targeted our image, we've got the image the right size, so now let's just continue working through some of our styles. We know that we have the H2 for the Viking blogger and we wanna get that up on the same line as the image for the logo. So that we'll target with logo container H2 and we'll call that, let's just call the font size about 24 pixels. I think that's, that's about what we have in the mockup there. And sometimes it's kind of nice to have the mockups because you can actually double click into things and you can see what size is being used and down here. Okay, great, 24 pixels. You don't get that if you're working off of just a, a visual diagram, but sometimes I find that useful when I'm just building sites for myself and I've already sort of optimized the look of the mockup as much as I can given that it's just a rough mockup um, and it helps me just translate things very quickly into, into more of an HTML page. So we'll set that up. We've got the font size now at the right size, but now what do we do with the alignment? So in order to, so a, uh, an H2 is a block element, so that means that it's always gonna tick up its own space on its own line. Well, so to get around that, we'll just change the way that it's being displayed. So we'll display it as an inline block. And so now you'll see that it'll pop up on the same line as the other one, because an image is not, you know, images play a lot nicer with other elements, so they can be up on the same line. So we've still got a problem though, where it's vertically, the Viking blogger text is, is right on the same baseline as that image. And if you look at the mockup, we really kind of want to center it. And so the way that we do that is actually with a vertical align property. So vertical align middle, we'll do that. And then we'll take a look at that. And it's not quite right, but that's also because we need to do, we need to do the vertical align as well on the image. 
that's kind of a, these are some of kind of the, the quirks that you see with CSS. So now when we refresh down here, you saw that it's, now everything looks like it's aligned properly. So I think we're, we're ready to, to kind of move on to the next set of things. So there's one nifty little trick that I want to show you that um, sometimes can help you out while you're learning. And that's basically just to put a border around everything. So what you do there is exactly what it sounds like. We'll do one pixel solid, and then we'll just do a really light color. If FFF is the code for white, then we'll do something like EE. And we'll just put a border around everything. And there you go. So now you, that might even be too light. Let's do DDD. All right, and so now you can see where, where all the dividers are between all the elements. And so while you're, when you're kind of placing things around on the page, sometimes that'll just, that's a good thing to do while you're in development, just so you, you keep your eye on things.